And in this episode, the much anticipated Corinth Canal. And look, we videoed right through it, basically unedited from beginning to end. So just stick with it, because honestly, this is the sort of thing that very, very few people get to experience. Just watch it, look at everything. Coming out the far end, oh my goodness. This is what we've been looking for. Just when the stabilizers are working perfectly, what do we get? Flat calm. Hey, enjoy this video, it's really special. Okay, so this is very exciting. We've just lifted anchor and over there is the Corinth Canal. The little marina is right by the control tower and we gave him a quick call and he said to pop on over and then they'll let us know what's happening but I suspect that we're going to be able to go straight through the canal now and there's a fairly big boat coming in as well, a ship but I think it'd be quite nice to go through before them anyway um, because then we can look back at them but we get that clear view through so I'll just give them a call Corinth Canal, Corinth Canal, Awanui, NZ standing by for East West Transit I confirm enter the canal, Awanui NZ. Um, come into the area. So there's an area where you enter into the canal. So because I said confirm, he didn't hear the confirm, I don't think. So you'll see us coming. There's a yacht ahead of us, so he's going to go. So he got cleared through, actually. Did you hear him? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking he might have been... Oh, was he the one that refilled? He might have refilled somewhere because the guy said you're cleared to go through. To right, him. and we have to give way to him because we're coming from his right. No, no, he, he got cleared through first, so right. we'd do that anyway. But he's making a beeline for the canal, so... Are you surprised, like I am, that there is not a lot of boats all here ready, ready to go through? Yeah, well, I mean, it's been closed for nearly two years. So, you know, maybe it's not in people's minds at the moment. Yeah. But I suspect, you know, if you get 30 a day and they're paying an average of, let's say, three, 400 euros, that's 10,000 euros a day and 70,000 a week. It's about three million a year. It doesn't seem like enough, does it? To be honest, to run a thing like this. But anyway. three point five million. Yeah. Here comes that little yacht. It's actually quite nice when you do see other people doing something that you're doing as well. It's like last night when we came in here, and just seeing that there was just a couple of boats anchored, which aren't there now. Maybe they left early this morning. Um, yeah, is reassuring. So we're going to try and do this one almost unedited. Yeah, we hope so. Um, most of the editing takes me probably, I don't know, 20 hours per episode, I guess. But Depends what you might say. Oh yeah, maybe we won't edit it even if I do. <laughs> but I think we just run the camera and we may have to stop at some stage to put another battery in. but. Should only really take just over half an hour. So anyway, there's a anchor drag alert. Oh, there's the anchor drag alert. I better get rid of that, I suppose. How is it saying that when the anchor's up? Because it's not that intelligent. So we're going to weigh anchor. There we go. Anchor weighed. Right. Are you going to call them up again? No, I'm going to just follow this guy in because he was before us. Last night it was cute, eh, watching all the different boats just coming out. Oh. Every once in a while you just see another one pop out. And when you're coming up from the open area there, the open waters, 
you just cannot see with the entrance to the canal. It's not even when we were here tonight. Well, it's not even obvious now. Look. Yeah. Anyway, look, this guy is slowing right down, so we're going to come around the corner. There's a boat coming the other way. Oh. You can see it coming out. So yeah. it may be that we have to wait here a little bit, but. So what are we going to do? We're just going to come around the corner here, and then we will. The guy in the tower over there. See, there it is. Oh the yeah. Control tower. So he'll see us. This guy's almost come to a halt. This guy's clearly coming through from west to east. So it's very obvious to me we have not been cleared in as yet. And we will just come and wait out here patiently. So there's the first bridge, see, across the canal. Oh yeah, at the top there, in between the band, yeah. And there are road bridges that they actually lower for cars to go across. Anyway, we'll poke our nose out here and I suspect we will very quickly see whether there are other boats coming or not <laughs> because it's a straight line. Here, look at me. You've still got food from breakfast on your face. It's okay, it adds character. So look at this, we've got a three-way little triangle going here. This guy's going to slide through nicely. He's crossing our bow. The yacht's ahead of us. See how we've got a red light at the entrance? You may not be able to see that on the right-hand side. See that? No, I can't even see right it. Right by the entrance, up there. Yeah, I can't see it red. Yep, it's red. So at this stage, it's a no-go. It goes green when we can go oh, through. Oh, right it's down on, there. Yeah, right, on I'm both looking. sides, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a little experiment And he is, he's done it from the top as well. It looks like he's on there on his own. Amazing. Well, there you go. There's the Corinth Canal. Right, I don't see red lights anymore. Yeah, I still, they're still red. Oh, yeah, there they are. Yeah, oh, and here's right. a boat coming the other way. You oh, see? yeah. Oh, look at that. So that's a view of the canal, first time. Wow. So we'll just go and quietly sit behind this fellow here. And you can see a yacht about halfway down. Yeah. So no doubt they'll just want us to sit over here. And we will wait patiently. That, oh, that was where you could have tied up. Yeah. And you can tie up here. See the wharf ahead to the left? Yeah. You can tie up there to pay your transit fees. But we've paid our transit fees. So I may have to pop down and get the number for that if he is unaware of it. But anyway. You did tell it to him this morning. No, that was yesterday. This morning you gave the oh, reference number. Oh, I gave number. the invoice number. You true. did. Yep, so he'll know. Yeah. Oh, so they actually want us to tie alongside, I think. Couldn't, because if there were a lot of ones, they wouldn't be wanting yeah. to do it's that. It's interesting. I think it looks like they're getting ready to. But they may be going to pay. Yeah. So what I might we do... We might just sit here. Yeah. And... Quite shallow here, eh? 5.2. Yeah, 5 metres, it's okay. You just want to put the anchor down here? No. I do not want to put the anchor down here. No, we'll just sit here. So this is the other bay here. Is that where that guy's swimming? Oh yeah. That's the other bay where we could have... Anyway, I think we'll just come to a halt here. Hello, I want me. You can go, Captain. <coughs> Okay, Awanui NZ, Awanui NZ is cleared into the Corinth Canal. What did he say, Captain? What did he say? Portside, I think he said. Copy, thank you. Is that what he said? Not sure. Not too worried about it. Because that other one's coming out, you see. Yeah, and he'll be on one side, so why don't yeah. we go on the other? <laughs> hey? Yeah. So Do I we... suspect these people ahead of us have not paid. Right. What do you say? Don't know. He'll start shouting if he's not happy. Right, and he's up in there. Can we wave to him or not? Yeah, I think maybe just confirm that again because yeah. the light's red. Awanui, yep. Awanui, confirm cleared into the canal. Oh, 
Copy, thank you, copy, thank you. I just note the red lights, red lights at the canal. Awanui is entering the canal on the port side. He's walked away from his desk. He's gone away from his desk. Awanui NZ, Awanui NZ. How many meters the yacht? One five decimal four seven. How many meters the yacht? The yacht is fifteen point four seven meters. Here we go. Proceed half mile at the north side of the entrance, out of the breakwater, and wait instructions on 11. So we're not to go in yet. Is that for Awanui NZ? Awanui, go, Captain. Seven knots. Copy, copy. <laughs> and here we are. This is it. Isn't it just beautiful? So I don't understand why he's allowed us to go when there's still a yacht coming the other way. I know, and it's. And that we've got red light. It goes against everything in the book. I know. There's the road lip. Oh yeah. The bridge below it. So they can drop that six metres. Wow. I mean, incredible. Massive cruise ships go through here. Really? Yeah, there's photos of it. I... And that's all the area around the side. That is amazing. Are you alright with the, do you need two hands, eh? There's a bit I'm of a right. current, isn't there? No, no, it's okay. I'm fine. You want me to do the camera? Is that one going away from us? It hasn't got any closer. Oh, no, it hasn't, has it? So I think it's going away from yeah, us. I think it is. Yeah, I don't think they'd want you to pass people in no, here, eh? No, no. So you can see on the sides, there's quite a bit of clay in that. And during the Second World War, it got bombed by the Germans. So there's a lot of damage done. And then there's been earthquakes where there's been a lot of damage. So it has been closed off and on for the last two years while they'll do a lot of repairs. This was, was it hand dug? It started being hand dug, eh? It did and in, then the 18, in the 18, in the 19th, 1800s. Yeah. In the 1800s by um, the French uh, initially and then um, by Greece. And this through here is the bit that you often see on all the pictures with that really steep bit. So I'm going to leave you with that and head down. You sure you're okay? I'm absolutely fine. So hard to believe that they take full-size cruise ships through here. So anything over 100 tonnes and you have to have a pilot on board and a tug. So obviously they would go through incredibly slowly, but what an amazing thing for people to see. I 
suspect we've got a little bit of current going with us because normally we do 1200 rpm and just get seven knots whereas we're doing 7.3 and we just got 1100 rpm and if you look out the back there you can see it's slopping against the side in our wake so you can imagine what it's like with larger boats going through here at seven knots okay that five that marker on the side five i don't know whether that means five knots but we were told to go at seven so going to be a good boy and do as we're told um, or it could be five thousand meters to go so five kilometers i suspect the latter Hello, who are you on the phone with? Rodney. Uh -huh. I mean, what an amazing concept. 600 BC they thought let's dig a canal, decided it was unfeasible and instead dug tracks that they put wheeled trolleys on that ships would be carted across the isthmus because they realised what a difference it would make to the economy of Greece. Pretty incredible. And then in 67 AD, they actually started digging it using 6,000 prisoners of war um, that were all Jews, as it turned out, but then that went bankrupt. So a few bridges here. Lighting for at night. We're pretty cool to go through at night, but we ain't paying another 350 euros to go through at night. That's for sure. And somewhere along here are steps going up the walls that the workers dug out because they used to lower them down from the top to work on it. And see if we can see those and I'll show you them as we go past. There's a few steps over there but I don't know where they go, sure as heck don't go all the way to the top but There's steps along here somewhere, sweetie, dug into the cliff all the way to the top. Let's we'll see if we can find them. So the yacht ahead of us was obviously going the same way as us because it ain't getting any bigger. You can see how if you were following a fairly big boat, you'd need to be pretty careful, wouldn't you? People up on the bridge there. It's a bit of a sightseeing thing, I think. Going down there, sharing the adventure with family. Oh, I just hope the noise isn't on the camera. We really need to do something about getting rid of that wind noise. But looks like some work's been done there. That Uh, we knew go ahead sir, go ahead. Awanui, go ahead. Go faster. Copy that.
Okay, so we've just been told to go faster. So we'll go up to eight knots. So you're gonna get some wind noise now, I'm sorry. I'll um, edit that out as best I can. Many people over the centuries proposed that it should be built. Problem was, all those that proposed it started dying. And when construction finally began of the Corinth Canal, the companies that started it initially went bankrupt, whereas finally it was commissioned to a French company and then back to the Greeks, and it was actually the Greeks that completed it. Hasn't really been a success, to be honest, because ships quickly outgrew it, so effectively now it's mainly used for pleasure vessels. The odd cruise ship goes through. And just prior to the last closure, about 11,000 ships a year were going through, or 11,000 boats. Okay, so now we're doing eight knots. Actually, that's a good idea, isn't it? I can talk to you when I've got the camera facing the other way. So every time I turn it round, I can talk. It won't be the loud noise, I hope, anyway. It's a little bit of wildlife along here, um, a lot of pigeons, as always. And I don't quite know why he told us to go faster, other than the fact that there's no other boats right behind us at the moment. I thought that yacht was going to follow us, but clearly it's not, it was tying up, so they must have something at the western side that wants to come through and they just try and manage it during the day, I guess. Okay, there's a bit of work over there as well. Man, that's a lot of work there, Fiona. Look at that. Obviously that was a bit of a worry. So, so it's about 100 feet high, most of the way along. I suppose you could work it out. It's 100 feet high and it's 45 metres wide. So we could work out, someone's obviously already done it, I don't know why I'm even bothering to work it out, how many cubic metres came out. But um, I'll just turn the camera around again and you can see the work they've been doing over the last two years. So there's a seismic fault that runs through this area and over the years time and time again it's been closed because of earthquakes and huge slips into the canal. Um, during both the First World War and the Second World War it was bombed. In fact uh, there's a bit of an argument about whether it was the Germans that bombed it in the Second World War or whether the English actually caused a huge amount of damage when they blew up the bridge and uh, create a lot of demolition along the walls. Um, probably never going to be worked out if it's honest, but um, yeah, it gets closed all the time. It's um, only just been opened again, having been closed off and on since 1920, sorry, not 1921, 2021, with a series of earthquakes. Pretty amazing work's been done here out to my left. You can see, uh, man, why it was closed for two years, but. I mean, I totally get why they've done it, but it's just a part of you when you see it like this, it takes away from that natural effect of the canal that was dug out of limestone. Now it's sort of starting to look a little bit clinical and they've got no choice really because it's just gonna get closed time and time again. Um, we went to Egypt with the kids uh, back in 2006 and we went to see the pyramids and they were starting to pave around the base of them, put um, concrete barriers up and there were plinths there to put ropes along so that you could sort of control the, cloud, the crowds and 
just started feeling a little bit Disneylandish. And I don't know, you know, if they do this all the way along the canal, then really it just becomes like anywhere else. Whereas, you know, I do think part of the beauty and the uniqueness of the Corinth Canal is exactly what you see here. stonework right from the edge of the canal up to about 50 feet and it probably looks like about a 15 degree angle so that would have all been taken in there by hand and laid just to support the cliff.
See the cars waiting, Fiona, on either side? You've held them up, I don't think they're that interested. This guy ahead of us just been cleared to enter. So that's pretty much the Corinth Canal. At either end, there's a road, and at one end, a railway line that go across the canal and rather than raise them right up which or have roads that lift up maybe like they do in a lot of countries in Europe they actually submerge them nearly seven meters below the surface of the water so um, yeah they only do that when they absolutely have to and today they were managing boats in both directions and it looked like they actually had cars waiting on both sides for quite a period of time and it must be a bit frustrating for drivers, but at the end of the day, when they're charging 350 euros for us to go through half an hour, I guess we get the priority. It's like glass over here.
Anyway, nice to just practice with the drone. But after we left here, it was a great time that we had. Um, we were talking to some friends back in New Zealand. They were on marine traffic, saw us and told us coming in the opposite direction was another Kiwi boat. Ah, yeah, the Corinth uh, was a great trip through, great trip through. So, yeah, thanks for being hey. <laughs> and you live, you normally live in New Zealand, do you? <laughs> we live in Queenstown? Uh, yeah, we come. Ah, so you live in Queenstown. Oh, welcome to Europe. How long have they been travelling? How long have you been travelling? How long have you been travelling? Three years. Three years. And you left from New Zealand, huh? Looks like there's a problem with his radio. Yourself. Uh, we just started in March. Have an awesome trip, guys. Yeah, thank you. Great to see you. You too. There's an RC boat coming next. <laughs> there is, uh... Is his name? Yeah, they're nice as well. <laughs> okay, an Australian boat following. Okay, we'll avoid him then. <laughs> Okay, bye bye. You're the first Kiwis we've seen at sea. <laughs> Lovely little port of Galaxity. Hopefully that's pronounced right. So we should be there in about half an hour's time, hopefully. And uh, we're all set, ready to go. It's been a big day, five hours. This is cute, see. Oh. Well, there's that word again, cutesy. Got a funny feeling is our it? viewers are going to get sick to death of hearing cutesy. They're well, just going to have to get used to it. I'll have to just find another word. Um, this was our lovely lady from Sweden told us about this place. Buffy. Yeah. The first time we went there, eh? Yeah. I think this Should is we lovely. Show me all different places along this coastline. So the recommendation in the book is that we moor at the northern end. So we're basically facing about south now. So it's going to be just inside that breakwater ahead of us and they say to put the chain as far across on the other side as you can but we're not going to go silly because to me that looks like about 100 metres and I don't want to run out of 100 metres before we back up so um, we'll go about two thirds the way across I think it's calm the forecast for the next few days is calm so I don't think it'll be as good as gold Yeah so you can tie alongside here as well that's what they were saying Yeah but I think we'll try and back in. If there's no spot, we can tie there and go and find out what the story is, eh? Looks like a point between this cat and the... What are they saying? What's she saying? Yep. Yep. Nice. Oh, she's going to come and help. Yeah. Okay, I'm going down. Okay. under our boat today so this is going to take a little bit of practice to get better and better at it but I will find a way and the only way to learn is to practice 
So over the next few months, I'm going to get good at finding out for you exactly what's lurking under Awanui NZ. Anyway, while I was editing and doing this, Fiona cried out and said, Hey, there's an ore oven coming. And I thought, oh yeah, right I wonder if it is or not. So I popped upstairs and guess what? Once again Fiona was right. From Australia. Okay, Sally Forth. Well, you never guessed who just turned up. Friends from Australia. They didn't know we were here, we didn't know they were coming. N52 beside an N51. How cool is that? Wow! First Nordhaven we've met up with. And it's someone we know! How cool! How cool! Beautiful morning here in Galaxity. And we've had two nights here. Gonna head off today up to the head of the Corinth Gulf. A uh, magnificent bridge goes across the Gulf, so it'll be interesting to see that. And then we're going to go into a quayside port tonight and then tomorrow we're going to head out into the Ionian for the first time so that's going to be pretty cool getting out there i've um, got a couple of really good suggestions we've received from a friend back home um, suggesting um, that if we loved poros and we loved vathi then you got to go to this place so uh, going to be a surprise for us and a surprise for you really looking forward to that anyway just wandering off a bit of a walk in the morning Fiona came around here yesterday said it was absolutely beautiful so I uh, figure we're not going to do too much walking for the next day or so so just a good chance to get some exercise and really enjoyed this place it's nice a few more boats coming in now. Look, there's only one at anchor out there when we came in. What is it now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven boats. And Quayside relatively busy too. Another Nordhaven beside us last night. Pretty cool from down under. First time we parked beside a Nordhaven. And I mean, it was amazing. We already knew them. How cool is that? So I've been talking to a mate back home who gave me some great advice because by this stage we're quite confident with the med mooring and now we get more nervous about coming side on. We had a little bit of a mishap in, um, just out of Kos where we had a strong wind and so what he said was on a nice day go round to the quay that you want to go side on so we've got to put our port side on and just nudge up towards the quay with the bow. And then once you've actually got the bow sitting right over the key, throw your line, try and get it over a bollard, or if someone's there to help, get them to help you, and then just put reverse idle on the port engine, and you'll just find that the after the boat will come around onto the key, and you can do the other line. So we did that, it worked, and then sadly, it was goodbye to Galaxity and goodbye to Mark and Sally. We'd had a fantastic stay. It was so neat to meet a friend from down under, but it was time to head off. What a neat place. In the next episode, what an amazing bridge they built over the Gulf of Corinth at the head of it. And we made a dumb decision. We got complacent. We've had too much good weather. We push time to the limit. Here we go, get ready. Here she goes. Woohoo!
And for goodness sake, I mean, how many gorgeous wee harbours are there in Greece? We'll show you some more.